Hi everyone, Darren from ILAM. How does UTP work? What's with all the wire twisting and what does that have to do with transmitting data on computer networks? In my previous video I talked about the electromagnetic spectrum and how electromagnetic waves are all around us travelling through air and space. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll include a link below. Well, electromagnetic waves can also travel through and affect other media, like metals such as copper, in ways that we don't necessarily want. In this video I'm going to talk about how we transfer data over twisted pair cables and how we deal with keeping unwanted electromagnetic waves out. So when we talk about unwanted electromagnetic waves, we refer to it as electromagnetic induction or interference, EMI for short. It's EMI from artificial sources that most concern us when it comes to data cables. And these can be anything from electrical cables, radio waves, or even other data cables. You see, every electrical circuit creates an electromagnetic field which will radiate a certain distance. You might remember doing experiments with iron filings and magnets back in high school. Well, in many cases, these electromagnetic fields can radiate far enough to interfere with our data cables, which are also carrying electrical signals, and the two don't play nicely together. Data cables transmit data by sending electrical signals down copper wires using tiny changes in voltage to create the ones and zeros that make up the bits and bytes of information for computers. The receiving equipment at the end of the cable needs to accurately detect all of those tiny voltage changes to turn them into something that looks like the information that was originally sent. If other electrical signals get in along the way, it could mean data loss, retransmission, the distance being restricted, or just a bog slow network. So we need to design our data cables to keep electrical interference out. UTP, as you might be aware, stands for Unshielded Twisted Pair. Unshielded may sound counterintuitive at first. If we're trying to keep EMI out, why not shield the cable from those signals? Well, it's more expensive to do it that way, and we came up with another method that works quite well anyway, by twisting the wires inside the cables. In a balanced line, two wires carry equal but opposite signals, and the destination detects the difference between the two as a measure of voltage. Be aware that voltage isn't a unit of energy as such, but rather a measure of the difference in electrical potential between two parts of a circuit. The bigger the difference, the bigger the voltage. As an example, let's assume the top line here has minus 2 volts and the bottom line is plus 2 volts, which makes the potential difference 4 volts. For data transmission, we want the input voltage to be equal to the output voltage. So if we put 4 volts in, we want to see 4 volts out. If there's power cables or other data cables nearby, say for example a 240 volt power line, we start getting electromagnetic induction on the wires and we could be continually adding voltage, particularly to the wire closest to the source of EMI as we move along. In our example here, we've been picking up an extra volt here and there along the length of the cable, so now we have 4 volts at the transmission end has increased to 8 volts at the receiving end, which causes data rejection, retransmission and slows down our network. But if we add twist to the wires, what happens is we get a reversal of the polarity and therefore a reversal of the induced voltage with each twist. So it's continually adding and dropping voltage as we move along. So at the first twist we pick up a volt on the red line which takes it up to minus 1 volts. So now we have 3 volts of potential, but at the next twist we pick up a volt on the blue line taking it up to 3 volts, so now we're back to 4 volts of potential. And so it continues down the line adding and dropping voltage, so the resulting voltage at the receiving end ends up the same as the input voltage we started with, or at least close enough to it so the receiving equipment can decipher it and discard any excess noise. This process of using twist to the wires to deal with EMI is called differential mode. Differential mode was discovered by Alexander Graham Bell way back in the 1890s as a way of dealing with EMI on the original telephone and telegraph lines. As the use of electricity took off, the power lines started playing havoc with the communications lines. The method they came up with to deal with that interference was called wire transposition, which is basically swapping the wires over every few poles. This was an early form of wire twisting with a twist rate of about 4 twists every kilometre. So differential mode isn't rejecting the EMI as such, but rather accepting it and using it against itself. Remember, we're not concerned with the voltage level as such, what we're looking for is any voltage change. As long as the voltage stays the same as what we started with, the data gets through. So that's a little bit about differential mode and how it works to keep EMI out of our UTP cables. In my next video, I'll go on with the different types of UTP cable available and also STP, shielded twisted pair cables. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like below and don't forget to subscribe and give the little bell a click if you'd like a notification of any new videos as they go up. 
please check out our webpage at www.dintech.com.au and if you need any more information, please comment below or send us an email to sales at dintech.com.au. Thanks and bye for now.